Welcome to Operating Systems Unit 7, Part 2. I'm going to talk about threads. What are threads? What is the difference between a process and a thread? And a little bit about different threading models. So what is a thread? Well, you might want to say it's a lightweight process, but the truth is, is that a thread does not exist without a process. So a thread is actually a unit of execution of a process. So here's an overview of what uh, multi-threaded processes would look like. A process that does not uh, use multiple threads it is like the figure on the left. It's just one thread of execution. Most modern operating systems and applications are multi-threaded. For example, if you have your word processor, you could have one thread that is doing a spell check, another thread reading from the keyboard, another thread putting an image onto the, getting the image and putting it onto the document, etc. So the way it works is that when you have a multi-threaded application, you can, uh, if one thread is uh, like loading an image and that takes some time, you can still continue to do your uh, typing and editing because the entire process doesn't have to block, just the one thread has to block to finish its task. So there are a lot of uh, reasons to use multi-threaded applications. And uh, this is just a, oh, again, this is an overview of what I just said. And when, you, when your process creates a new thread in a multi-threaded application, what happens is the operating system needs to then give resources to that thread. So uh, as the application creates a new thread, the operating, it needs to be mapped, that would be a user thread, it needs to be mapped to what's called a kernel thread, and the kernel thread is where you get the resource from the operating system. So here are the benefits of threading. You can be more responsive. Well, like I just said, if one thread blocks, the rest of the process doesn't need to block. By the structure of a multi-threaded process, all of those, the threads of the process share the resources. So it's uh, instead of having two different processes separated from each other, you have one process that does a, that uh, spreads out the work. So uh, there is a very good benefits of using multi-threaded applications, but your operating system to support multi-threaded applications in order to utilize this. So the way to best utilize threading is if you have a multi-core processor, because if you only have one processor, you're still switching from one thread to another, but um, it's, you're still only using one processor. If you have multiple cores or multi-processing going on, then you're able to process more than one thing at the same time in parallel. So here's a, a figure which shows the difference between, if you look at the top figure, this is concurrency. Now still you're switching between the threads and it seems like they're all going at the same time, but the truth is they're not actually running in parallel unless you have multiple cores. So to utilize the full uh, multi-threaded concept, systems need to, it works better with multiple cores. So there are user threads and there are kernel threads. So when an application is created, if it's a multi-threaded application, if the operating system does not support threading, it doesn't really make do any good, it, then it will still act as a single threaded process because the threads still have to be mapped to one kernel thread. But if the operating system supports threading, which most modern operating systems and modern processes are multi-threaded, then you can utilize the full benefit of multi-threaded applications. So the way that you map, what happens is as soon as a process creates a new thread or an additional thread, it needs to get assigned resources from the kernel. So the kernel needs to then create what's called a kernel thread or the ability to provide resources for this thread that's been created by the, by the process. And the ways that you can map your user threads to kernel threads are the following mappings, many to one, one to one, many to many, and two level. And what this indicates is many to one means you map all of your threads in your user process all get mapped to one kernel thread. So this is uh, not utilizing the benefits of threading. One to one means that every time you create a user thread, you get a kernel thread. And this is very good, except it can exhaust the resources in the system. Many-to-many many 
requires management on the part of the operating system because what it means is you give more user threads to less kernel threads, which would not exhaust resources as quickly, but there needs to be management on uh, taking a thread away from a user, uh, taking a kernel thread away from a user thread and uh, switching it. And then two level is the best of everything. It allows you to uh, utilize the many to many, but allows you to dedicate certain things that are very important to one thread. So let's take a look at models. Many to one. So here's a, a figure of how the many to one works. It is not used, uh, it does not support the full threading because if one of the user threads blocks, the entire process is going to block. This is one to one. Now this means that every time a process creates a thread, it gets a kernel thread, so it gets resources, but there is only so many resources available per process, per system. So if there needs to be choices that need to be made when the resources get, uh, get used up and there's no more available resources. So that, the way to deal with that would be to use many to many. Instead of every time you create a thread, Every time you create a thread, you continue to get your kernel threads until those that have been allocated to the process are used up, in which case then you will need to, when a new user thread is created, you need to select a kernel thread uh, and take it, you know, and share, and take it away from one of the other user threads. But this requires more, this requires more management. And the two level is the same as the many to many, except it allows you to bind very important user threads to kernel threads, so those will not be taken away. And again, this also requires a lot of management on the part of the operating system. Now, I was talking before about uh, what happens when you have too many, too many threads. There's a thing called thread pools, which means that the operating system has so many threads available, and then decisions meet, need to be made if, those, if you exhaust the number of threads that have been available. Another thing that's modern, that's happening now, is for uh, application programmers, there are operating systems provide many ways for programmers to design their programs in the way they want them to be implemented, and then there are tools that are available, dif different names for different operating systems, to help to create multi-threaded applications and help the developers n to not have to make the threading decisions, just make the application, the implementation of the application decision decisions, and then the th there are uh, libraries that help support and guide and tools to create multi-threaded actions. So these are some of these uh, tools. There's thread pools, OpenMP, and Grand Central Dispatch uh, are to name a few, so please take a look at these slides and read about them and take a look at your case study and read about the different, uh, the different tools that are available and for your operating system case study and uh, include that in your exercise. So thank you very much and I'll be talking to you again soon.